everyone welcome to my channel and welcome to my new bookshelves because if you saw my bookshelf tour or watch my videos then you know that this is not my usual setup but i decided to just switch things up and i love how it turned out like i just have love having this little corner with all my books in it it makes me so happy like i just sometimes i'll just like stand and just like look at my bookshelves like i just think it looks so cute but yeah i also got a haircut yeah <laughs> I just I thought I just had to mention that for some reason I don't know why but yeah I got a haircut and I have a new setup so very exciting stuff is happening in 2021 I guess but anyway today's video is going to be my January wrap-up and it is going to be my first ever wrap-up and I'm very excited because I read seven books in January which is impressive for me because normally I read like two maybe three books a month and I read seven and most of them were audiobooks which is unheard of for me because I suck with audiobooks like I don't have the attention span <laughs> to like pay attention to an audiobook like I'll just get distracted but I invested I didn't invest it wasn't that much money I got a shower speaker which changed my life for listening to audiobooks because it, I just can just listen to them in the shower and that's like it just it elevates the whole experience but yeah i do want to listen to more audiobooks this year and i'm surprised that the majority of the books that i read this month were audiobooks so it's very different for me but um yeah i don't want this intro to be a million years long so let's just get into the books that i read in january so the first book that i read in january was an audiobook it was know my name by chanel miller she is the survivor of the brock turner stanford sexual assault case she used to go under the name Emily Doe, but then a few years ago she released her victim impact statement and that's when she came forward and re revealed her identity and wanted to reclaim her name and talk about her story and this was such a beautifully written audiobook and it was so beautifully narrated because she does narrate it herself which I think just made the story even more heartbreaking to listen to because you can just tell that this whole experience was very difficult for her and very frustrating and there were some points where you can like hear it in her voice that she would be getting like emotional and it was just such a powerful story it was devastating hearing her talk about how dehumanizing the trials were and how difficult it was for her to get through them and how it's going to continue to be difficult for her mentally and emotionally if you want to listen to her story i highly recommend listening to it on audiobook because it's just so powerful and so impactful listening to her tell her story herself so yeah i didn't rate this one because i don't rate memoirs and nonfiction because it just feels weird narrating someone's life and their personal experience so i didn't rate it but i do highly recommend it if you do want to read the story i do highly recommend the audiobook the next book that i read was beach read by emily henry and I love this book so much. I gave it four stars and it was just such a cute enemies slash rivals to lovers romance. Like I just thought that it was so cute. It basically follows these two writers. There's January who is a romance writer and Augustus or Gus who is a literary fiction writer and they live in neighboring beach houses. January is at the beach is at the beach house because she's cleaning out her dad's home after he passed away and basically these two writers they have writer's block and they decide to do like a bit of a challenge and switch genres so Gus is writing trying to write romance and January is trying to write literary fiction and then basically a romance ensues from there and I just thought that it was such a cute romance and it was just it was so funny like the banter was very good too and the steamy scenes were very steamy <laughs> and I just thought it was so good and there's also this like kind of like a subplot of researching cults which I thought was really interesting like because Augustus is a literary fiction writer he was researching cults for one of his books and I just think that the whole like subplot of researching cults was really interesting like it wasn't just like just a pure romance like there was that little 
little subplot in there which I thought was really interesting and there was also one line from this book that reminded me of my boyfriend and it was just it was so cute and this book just it just made me so happy like it was so funny so flirty so romantic and just it was just so good I I really enjoyed this one and I want to reread it because I do want to go in and tab it after that I read The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and I gave this one five stars and this was just such such a good book it, I don't know how else to describe it other than just like a fun time because I enjoyed myself so much when I was reading this book like I had such a great time it was just such a fun story it basically follows this girl Avery who all of a sudden receives the inheritance like the entire inheritance of like this bajillion bajillionaire basically and she has no idea who he is and has no idea why she's receiving his entire inheritance and then she and the grandsons of the guy are trying to figure out why she is the one that got everything and there's a bunch of like games and riddles in it and it was just so so interesting it's basically like a cinderella-esque retelling with like knives out twists and knives out is one of my favorite movies ever it's so fun i've seen it like three times it's such a good movie and when i read the synopsis for this book and it was pitched as like a knives out story i was like i need to read it <laughs> and it did not disappoint like this was just such such a fun story because it's just so interesting finding out why she received the inheritance and the ending had me literally speechless like I was just sitting there for like five minutes like what did I just read because oh, it was so it was so good and I can't wait for the second book it's coming out sometime this year it's called The Hawthorne Legacy and I am so excited for that but I love this book so much I want to reread it so I can like go in and like tab my favorite parts and all that but it was so good it was also like there's like a bit of a romance but it's nothing like too crazy it's not like a full romance like if you want something that's like a murder mystery but has like a little bit of romance then I think you'll enjoy this one because it's not heavy on the romance it's mostly focused on the whole mystery so it's just so so good then i listened to another audiobook it was so you want to talk about race by ijomo unduo and this was a very important reading each chapter talked about a different topic such as the school to prison pipeline microaggressions cultural appropriation and a lot more and each chapter started off with the author's own personal experience and then she would dive into the learning experience and provide tips that you could implement into your own conversations about race which i thought was really important and very interesting because talking about race can be difficult if you don't know much about it so I think it was I think it was really valuable that she did provide those tips and advice on how to approach conversations about race without coming off as like insensitive or anything so I thought that was really interesting and it was just overall a very important and valuable resource I will be buying the actual like physical book so I can like look through it and like highlight and everything because this was a very valuable resource that I do see myself like rereading and going back to because it just provided a lot of insight and taught me a lot more about race issues in America because they are very prevalent here and it was just a very important resource that I think everybody should read. I didn't rate this one either. I don't rate memoirs and nonfiction. As I said, I do highly recommend it if you want to learn more about race and race issues in America because I think it's very important to be educated on those things. And then after that, I started my reread of the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series because I do want to read the Heroes of Olympus, which I have on my shelf. I promise I'm gonna get to it soon. I just, I want to reread Percy Jackson first. So of course I started with The Lightning Thief and I did annotate it. <laughs> no, I didn't I didn't annotate it. I tabbed it because I don't want to write my books yet, but I did tab it. <laughs> There's a lot of little tabs here. Each tab stands for something different, but yeah, I I love this series so much. I read it for the first time last year and it's just so good. It's such a nice little middle grade story. And even though it doesn't really feel like it's a middle grade, like 
I don't know, I just think it's so, it's so fun. Such wild adventures that these, that these children are going on and the characters all, are all just, they're so funny and lovable and it's just such, such a good series. Like I am going to be rereading this entire series and it's just so, it's so good. This is like my new comfort series. Like if I ever want like a pick me up, I'm definitely going to be going back to these books and I just really enjoyed it and I can't wait for the TV show to come out. I don't know when it's coming out. It's probably going to be like a few years before it does come out but I am so excited for the TV show because Rick Riordan is going to have like full creative direction in it. I'm so excited. It's gonna be so good and yeah I oh, I love this series so much. I don't know what I can say without being so repetitive but I love this series and if you've been wanting to read it and if you've been wanting to get into like Greek mythology I think this is a good place to start because it makes Greek mythology like more easy to understand I guess because it doesn't go into like very in-depth crazy details like it does talk about Greek mythology but in a more approachable way which I really enjoy because my brain can't comprehend things sometimes so yeah I I love this book so much and then after that I listened to another audiobook it was this is how you lose the time war and I gave it some three stars it was it was a good audiobook, the romance and like the yearning with between the two main characters, Red and Blue, was 10 out of 10. Like the yearning was, it was so good. And the letters and everything about the letters was just so, it was so good. But my brain just can't <laughs> comprehend sci-fi. Like reading this book taught me that sci-fi is not for me because... I just don't have the brain capacity for it because when I was listening to this audiobook I was confused and lost like 99% of the time like I had absolutely no idea what was happening so I literally just kept reading because of the romance between red and blue like I, I basically like, treated it like a romance story instead of like a sci-fi story because my brain just can't comprehend sci-fi and that's okay I now know that sci-fi is not for me. If you do like sci-fi and want one that has like a good like romance, this one is a really good sapphic one and it's just the the letters and everything was so good but I don't have the brain capacity for sci-fi. The last book I read in January was another audiobook. It was Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo and I gave it four stars. It was so beautifully written. It was my first time reading anything that was written in verse and it was just so beautifully written like it was so interesting reading something that was written in verse because that was new to me and I think that's that like structure worked really well with this story the story follows two girls who lose their father in a plane crash and they don't know that the other existed and that they didn't know that their father had these two lives in the Dominican Republic and New York and when this tragedy happens they kind of bond over this it was interesting following these two sisters and how different their lives are and how they basically bond over the same tragedy and i just think it was so it was such a powerful story and i really enjoyed it as an audiobook because there are two narrators one for each character and one of the narrators is elizabeth acevedo and i just love when authors narrate their own audiobooks because they know how to tell their story in the best way and I just think that listening to this as an audiobook really elevated the whole experience because there are two characters and it was really interesting seeing how different their personalities are and it was easy to distinguish each character because of their voices and there are a few points throughout the audiobook like towards the end where the characters are talking to each other so it was just so cool listening to that as an audiobook because it just felt like a more immersive experience. I highly recommend listening to the audiobook because I feel like it just elevated the whole experience and it was just so beautifully narrated and I really want to read more of Elizabeth Acevedo's audiobooks because this one was just so good. So those are all the books that I read in January. I'm very impressed with myself that I read seven books in one month because that's that's very good for me and they were majority of them were audiobooks which is very unheard of so 
yeah this has been a very good reading month it was a good start to the year a very strong start so i'm very excited to read more throughout the year now that i have graduated university or college <laughs> i have a bachelor's degree now but yeah i am so excited to spend a lot of my time reading i have so many books that i want to read and i'm just so excited for my first like full reading year in a while so yeah so yeah that's it for this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one bye